Scriptures automatically, I go into scripture mode, okay. And when I am faithful to take you through everything, I am faithful to take you through a process to make you into the image of my son. I am faithful to get you from here to here so you can finish the race for my glory. We tell people God is faithful, they do this. They reach in their pockets, they start looking for things. No, not today. Because the blessings you're going to get from this today are you going to realize everybody sitting next to you is being stretched, is being molded, is on the potter's wheel. There's a reason you're going through what you're going through. It's not just because, and you're not in this by yourself. Okay, everybody sitting next to you has been going through a lot of changes. Well, I've been praying for revival in the church since I was first saved. I know the days of revival are coming. But you go through stuff for your heart to be revived so that you're in love with Jesus and not about His blessings. Hallelujah. In Deuteronomy 7, now this is after Moses had come back off the mountain. He had given the Ten Commandments. Okay, and now God's chosen people are getting the word of the Lord from Moses. And in Deuteronomy 7, 1 through 11, that verse in there, it says, Therefore know that the Lord your God, He is God, the faithful God, who keeps His covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love Him and do what? Keep His commandments. Okay, everybody wants God to be faithful, but they don't want to keep His commandments. Because after the Ten Commandments, they added 600 and something more to them. They couldn't keep the first ten, so let's make it more difficult. Okay, but he said he is faithful. What are his commandments but his living word? He's faithful to this. He is faithful to every word in this book because he wrote it by his Holy Spirit given to holy men of God. Okay, so he's faithful. Are you? Oh, it got quiet. Are you really faithful? Are you really faithful to your calling and to the purpose for which God called you? This whole thing is about the purposes for which you were born today. Only God knows the purposes, and you will get them in Revelation if you get still with God and accept His plan and His sovereignty over your existence. You will not get them if you want to be somebody. If you come into a church and you say, I want to be, you're already going to miss your calling. Because you used the key word, I. He wrote a perfect story for your life. He is the only one that can bring it to fruition and fulfillment. You have to go through a process to come to the place He's called you to. If you go to a ministry, and you walk in the door and you look around, I don't care if it's 20 people or 1,000 people, and you start going, I want to be, you will miss what God has for you. Because you became the issue. No longer is Jesus Christ your issue. You, long, you took yourself away from His sovereignty and made yourself an issue instead of the one who created you for His glory. It is a big difference. And that's where we start judging ourselves when we open today with no judgment. You judge yourself because when you use the word I, you put expectations in you to perform something you can't do apart from His grace and Holy Spirit because you use that key word I. Okay, when you when you put that in the vocabulary, that word make up, you should have a big thing on your wall at home with a big I. I thought about putting one there just so I don't use it. Scott and I were laughing. Every time we take God out of the equation, you know, him working on cars, if he doesn't ask God for help, next thing you know, he's bleeding. <laughs> hey, I know the feeling when I don't ask God for help, bam, it's something happens every single
single time that I don't bring him into the purposes for which I was created and I separate myself and put hope in Dennis, something goes wrong. But when my hope is truly in Christ Jesus, then he has me from the inside out. Then his strength is my strength. Then his wisdom, his discernment, his, his understanding of things, that starts to come up in me so I don't see through these little eyes anymore. I see through his. Because I've accepted his purpose for my existence here. I fought it for years until my wife corrected me. She said, just accept your calling and get over yourself. And you'll stop having all this, the ribs, the torn muscles, the cracked bones and the fingers and everything else. Okay? As soon as I said yes and I listened to my wife, guess what? A lot more peaceful after that. <laughs> she had to correct me because I was still trying to be the man. I was still trying to take on a responsibility when God says, I'll provide for you and your wife. I'll put a roof over your head. I'll provide your food and your clothing. You were called to come follow me. It's my responsibility after that. Once I accepted my purposes, and believe me, some of you men all fight with it because it's in your DNA. Women have different DNA, so do you. Oh, got it. Really? No, you don't. That word faithful, even in Lamentations, it says in 323, great is his faithfulness. You should know how faithful it is. Behold, each day is made what? New every morning. Great is his faithfulness. He made a new day today. God created this day special. I went outside the garage last night just to look outside. I was rinsing off some of the dirt off the car in the garage. And I walked, I used to go outside, and I went, oh my God. What he did with the clouds and the sunset yesterday, I just stood there and I just went, great is your faithfulness. He paints a new picture for us every day. And you know why he does that? For us. Plus he likes to show off. And he's allowed to because he's God. <laughs> that word faithful, when you look it up in the dictionary, that's becoming one of my favorite books. I probably should have studied that more when I was younger. Hallelujah. I wouldn't have to use it so much. I know what the stuff means. Faithful means to someone or something, constant, loyal, having or showing a strong sense of duty, responsibility, a conscientious, so are you really thinking about others, accurate, reliable, listen to this word, exact as a faithful copy. You know why you're in the process you're in? God wants to make you an exact copy of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what He wants to do with all of you. That's why you're going through what you go through. That's why you're being twisted. That's why you're being stretched. And that's why you're being molded. And the quicker you let God do that in you, the more you'll be an exact copy of His Son. Now, we're not going to get there until we get to heaven. Life is a journey one day at a time. I'm almost thinking about redoing that Bible study a little different next time around and teaching that in here again because it's been coming to me for a week. We get ahead of God's purposes. You don't go through the changes you go through today to get to tomorrow. I asked him why I took until yesterday to really break whatever else he was breaking in me so that I have this sense of peace that I've never experienced in 22 years inside of me right now. He says, because I had to deal with all this other stuff. I had to break this off of you, this off of you. We get crucified with Christ. That's a, that's a measure of death of self, slowly but surely. He knows how much you can handle day by day. He's not going to come to you and tear you in half all in one move. Could he? Yes. But you wouldn't learn anything and you wouldn't be able to help others go through it. If he changed you immediately, did I get changed immediately the day I got saved? The demons coming out, no more drugs, no more drinking, no more all that stuff. Yes, God delivered that in one hour. That was just addiction demons. Those were easy. But the process to become a man of God, I'm never going to leave that process. I am going to be changed day by day from glory to glory until I get to eternal glory. You will never come off the potter's wheel the day you do. You will get bruised. And you will get dinged, and then we'll have to pray for you and re-anoint you and everything else. <laughs> and you're going to do it because we get anxious for things. God shows you something, okay? He gives you a picture out here. You start running for the picture. That's what you do. You know why so many people don't fulfill their purposes? Why so many people start out great for years, their ministry goes, and then they fall away, they get in trouble? 
because they didn't go through a daily death of self. So that they became less, he became more, so they can walk in peace knowing it's never about them. It's about him in you. Amen. The exact copy of the Son of God. Amen. And I was one of those guys when he told me that years ago he wanted to make me into the image of the Son. I was a young Christian. I said, sure, go ahead. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for. Paul and I were talking about the other day. He goes, I said, God's just answering your prayers, brother. <laughs> he goes, what? I'm smiling. He's like this. I said, you pray that you be made more into the image of God, to the Son of God, to fulfill your God-given purpose. Amen. He's only answering your prayer. He was pulling his hair out. He was beside himself. But yet when I went and explained that he's getting an answer to his prayer, then the lights went on. He went, oh, oh, you're right. I said, you asked for it. I said, be careful. He said, you said, be careful what you give God permission to do because you can't take it back. And every one of you that have been anointed in here, you can't take it back. <laughs> Positive. <laughs> the next part of faithful. Faithful implies a continued steadfast adherence to a person. How steadfast is our God to us? Faithful day in and day out. He's faithful. The Bible says even when we're faithless. He protects us even when we're out there making mistakes. He does. And then when you come to your senses and you hit that wall, you fall on your knees, you know what God does? He washes you. He gives you a kiss on the forehead, sometimes a shot to the ribs or something just for an attention getter. But He forgives you. He sets you back on course. And He puts you right back where you were. The reason most Christians don't go right back to where they were and start going forward is because they take when they get off their knees before God, they take where they've been with them. Never take away. The only thing you learned from this was what not to do and the wisdom how you got there so you can help others not look back. Mm -hmm. Because they get up off their knees and they say, well, I used it, I could have, and this and that. And I've done it. I've done the same thing. And God finally corrected me. He says, when I say there's no record of your sin, I meant it. Because if there was a record of your sin, then my blood doesn't do what it says it does in my word. Yeah. See, if, if you can sit there and say you did things then you don't know what He did for you when He sent His Son to Calvary. Because when God said, and I used to say, God, man, how can He couldn't have forgiven me for this? It says, I've forgiven all of your sins, and I remember them no more. And once I got that in my heart, that revelation, once it got in here, not in my head, once I knew in my heart that I was forgiven and there's no record of it, then I got a lot more bold with God, and I said, you're my Father. I'm a father. I come to you with boldness because there's nothing here. The only thing you see is the finished work of the cross on me. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That is such an awesome revelation. That's what we got to, because there's so many believers I talk to when I'm out here in the stores, and they're carrying guilt and condemnation. Never let them do such a thing. If you really love your family in Christ, you tell them the truth, what's in this book. Because so many people walk around like this. Oh, you don't know what I've done. And I get them under the eyes and say, Did you repent? Yeah, well, you're sincere. Well, yeah, I sinned against God. Okay, then you're talking about this for what reason? What do you mean? He went there, so you don't have to talk about it. Because he right. moved. God will never come remind you. Remember what you did six years ago? You know why? Because when God looks down from heaven at you, and He's on the throne, He's going, All He sees his robes of righteousness mm. and a garment of salvation. Mm. He sees his son around you hallelujah. and in you. Yes. Don't you dare forget that. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. He said he was going to change you when I'm up here. Well, she leaves something on paper. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's study it all week. <laughs> hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, turn to Philippians. First chapter, verses 3 to 6. Remember what I just said? We're on a lifelong journey to eternal glory. They just said glorious. Our God saves. We're on our way to eternal death. Everybody in here is saved? Yeah, there you are. Hallelujah. We've got a house full of people on their way to heaven. So the salvation part is already taken care of in your life. Your eternal destination is already bought and paid for. You don't have to pay for that ticket. You don't have to get on a plane. Because when this heart stops beating, you're going to be transformed into the glorious image of the Son of God, filled with eternal glory in heaven. We don't, your plane ticket's already paid for. 
So that shouldn't even be part of your thinking when you're going through life. Because if you're worried about getting there, you won't go through what you need to be useful here now. And this is the process I'm talking about because you're all in it. I know you are. When I tell people you're in a process, think about a food processor. Oh, God. <laughs> that got your attention, didn't it? <laughs> gotcha. Hallelujah. In 3 to 6, Philippians 1. I thank my God for every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy. For, watch this next line. For your fellowship in the gospel. We fellowship together as a family in the gospel of Jesus Christ. From the first day until now, being confident in this very thing, that He who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Don't count on me being faithful. Count on Him. Amen. Yes. Pray that I remain faithful to the calling, because then He'll keep me equipped as a shepherd. Yes. And then I'll be able to get up here with messages that come from His heart, not mine. It'll come from the Spirit and not from a book. But it'll come from the eternal book of life. See what I'm saying? Put your hope and confidence in His faithfulness. Because the more you look at how faithful He is, when He said, just go out the garage door, I'm like, okay, I'm just cleaning the car. Oh, that's why I'm outside. To see His beauty. What are we saying? He is glorious. He wanted to just show off to me a little bit yesterday. Look what I did. Bam. Painted a picture. Every day, if you really look around, you'll see how glorious our King is and how mighty He is. You'll start trusting in the one that had me go look at a sunset yesterday just for Him to go, look, look who I am. you got nothing to be concerned about, Dennis. Look at what I just painted for you. Now, that was for everybody, but when He does something to you personally like that, it touches you in a way. And if you were listening to God, He would do the same thing for everybody. This isn't about me. This is about Him who loves you. And He wants to show you how much He loves you and how faithful He is to you if you would let Him and stop putting hope in yourself to accomplish and to succeed in life and let the overcomer of the world show you what your purpose is. Amen. Okay? He is faithful. He is faithful. Isaiah 43, 13. Indeed, before the day was, I am He. And there is no one who can deliver out of My hand. I work, and who will reverse it? Ooh. When He's begun in you in Philippians, Isaiah 43, 13. See, when you all come up here for prayer, God said every one of you, first of all, He gave me the grace to come up. And that's why I've asked all of you, can I really pray for you? Are you really okay? Before I anoint you, do I, have, do I have your permission? Does God have your permission? Because once you say yes to Him, nothing can reverse it. You will be changed. You will be. That's why I tell people, go gently to Him. And just say, you know what? I don't understand. I don't particularly like this. But I accept it. Because you are faithful to finish that which you have begun. You are faithful to finish that which you have begun. Like I said, when he was breaking something, I don't even know the depths of it. I won't know it for a while. He said, I'll understand it. But the peace of allowing him to break me, because I accepted my purposes. I have no other reason to be here. So I said, whatever you got to do to me, do it. That's a scary thought sometimes. Uh, but after so many years, you know what? I've noticed every time I go deeper with the Lord, when I come out of whatever he's taken me through, there's more internal peace there's more joy. That joy of the Lord is your strength. It's knowing that He's your strength and you're not. That's what joy of the Lord is your strength means. Everybody's got all these teachings on it. They're completely wrong. That means when you have joy unspeakable, that means you've given up on you. Your faith is solely in your Maker and not in yourself anymore. That takes all the pressure off your back. I have no pressure. Even as a husband, I don't have the pressure most men put on themselves that the world sees you as. The world tells you what you have to be as a man. You listen to the one who provides all your needs and not to this world. He'll show you how to provide. He will make a way when there's not a way because He is God and He is faithful because He says, I'll take care of it. Hallelujah. And when God says, I'll take care of it, He means it and He backs up His word because He's not a, what, a man that He can lie. 
When he says, don't see yourself as the world sees you, don't even put their expectations on you. You're a son and daughter of Almighty God. You let Him show you. Because outside these doors, they're going to put all these things on you. You have to, you should, you can, you will. Really? No, you won't. You'll fail miserably. When you say, you know what, I don't really listen to that. What do you mean you don't listen to that? I listen to God who said, Dennis, if you follow me, all your needs are my responsibility. If you're obedient to the purposes for which I created you, your needs are my responsibility. Amen. And everybody looks at me and goes, how can you live like that? Real easy. Doing pretty good, Alan. <laughs> God be good. We got a table full of food. There's stuff in the refrigerator. We're doing good here. Just what we need more cakes and desserts. Thank you, Jesus. I did so good. God is so good. But remember something. What He's begun in you. Remember, go back to God's faithfulness. And when you see His faithfulness, your faith in Him will grow. See, now when He does things in me and to me to change me, to mold me, I just say, do it. You know why? Because I see the end result every time. My faith is no longer in even how it's going to happen, but my faith is in Him to get me to that place of perfect peace with Him. I don't have any more hope in myself. I just don't. And everybody says, well, you've given up on yourself. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Scott and I talked about it, because when we put hope in ourselves, as talented as He is, if He goes out this door and says, well, I'm going to go do all this today, and bop, 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 before 6 o'clock tonight, He's going to probably have a couple more broke fingers or something. And so is David. He's learned that the hard way. Every time he makes all of his plans to go out and do all these jobs, and he don't put God before it, oh, God. Oh, man, you never believe the day I had. Yeah, what happened? I didn't put God first. Okay, right. there you go. It happens every time. He's involved with every one of your footsteps. That's why he says, I want to order your steps. But he can't order your steps when you want to go out the door and make your own path. Right. You can't. Yeah. It won't. He won't even bless it. Will he love you just the same? Of course. God is love. Oh, thank you. That's it. Thank you, Lord. God is love. He's going to love you no matter what you do. He's going to forgive you no matter what you do. But if you want God's best in your life, if you want the plans that He's established for you before the earth began, go through the process. It's worth it. Amen. It's worth it. Yes, it is. And so I told somebody the other day in the store that they asked me how old I was. I said 59. They looked at me and went, I said, I feel better now than when I was 20. Mm -hmm. God is faithful. Right. God said He's going to restore all the years that were taken from me. Amen. Right. He said, my life's just beginning. Hallelujah. All the trials my wife and I have been through. Our marriage is just really starting to get where it needs to be. Because He's broken us down. So when we walk, you know what? I don't walk ahead of her. She doesn't walk behind me. We walk side by side. That's how a godly marriage is to be. Side by side work. Do I take the spiritual lead? You bet I do because I'm accountable to God for it if I don't. Okay, that's what keeps her protected. Amen? Hallelujah. God is so good. You have your Bibles. Turn to 1 Thessalonians. The process of God to make you the copy, the exact image of the Son. When I was studying this this week, there's so much that talks about this. I left a whole stack of paperwork at home going, no, we're not going there. Because He gives me a lot so that when I get up here... Whatever he wants to say, he's already changed half it around anyway, so it really doesn't matter. It comes out. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5th chapter, verses 23 and 24. This is the process you're going through each and every day. Remember, when he said, I have to die this way, that the Holy Spirit will come live in you. So I had to go to the cross. I think that's in John, what, 14 or 15. I must die this way so the Holy Spirit will come. My Father and I will come make our abode in you. You will be filled with my life. He does that because this is the process you in. Everybody thinks you got sanctified the day you got saved. In one respect, you did, yes. But guess what? It's an ongoing process. Day, why did St. Paul say I die daily? That's that sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit to keep us His children. You cannot keep yourself. You need the power of Almighty God. That's why He says, wait before you go out until you are dude with power from on high. We talked about that Wednesday night. Endued with that power. That will do great and mighty things through you. Amen. Amen. Remember something. We don't do signs, wonders, and miracles. The power that works within you will. The healer lives in you. The Savior lives in you. He will do all the work by His great grace. And all you've got to do is show up. The power that works within you will do all the rest. 
1 Thessalonians 5th chapter 23 and 24. Now may the God of peace Himself sanctify you mm -hmm. completely. And may your whole, watch this, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is what? Faithful. There's that word again. Remember, see that? Heart, soul, mind, and body. Does God want you restored? Like I said, even if you come up for physical healing, God heals you. Okay, fine. But what else is wrong? What else is wrong? Because most of the times, physical ailments are caused by emotional ailments. I was telling that to somebody in the salon the other day, and they went, what? I said, most people's diseases of today that are in the world today are caused by their emotional struggles because they got bitterness, anger, right. hatred, unforgiveness. They have bitter root judgments Amen. in their heart. Amen. And most of their physical stuff, when, and I told them, I yes. said, once we learn to forgive, <clears throat> your body will be restored, I guarantee it. Yes. Because that's a cancer. That's a disease all unto itself. Yes. And that does, unforgiveness does more damage to you than a nuclear bomb will do. Mm. That you might survive. This you won't. You won't. Spiritually you will die. You will be here. But spiritually you will die. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because unforgiveness in your heart turns into a bitter root judgment and then you become God. Mm -hmm. We just talked about it today. You can't judge. And if you're judging, you're an unforgiving person. You can see error in somebody's life, you bet we do. You see a brother or sister stuck in sin, you come alongside them, you help them, you don't judge them. Right. Amen. Amen. We never judge them, we help them through it. Because sometimes they're stuck. Amen. They're stuck there, and they're looking around, and the ones that stay stuck are the ones that don't fellowship. Because they think they're the only ones back there. They're, they're stuck in there, and they stay home, and they hide back here thinking nobody sees. Well, in this house, you found out God sees. That's what I like about this house. You can't hide here. And we haven't gotten a bigger building until everybody's refined with fire so that we are that family of one in here. I told you, this is going to be a ministry of spiritual doctors. So no matter who walks through that door, one of you or two or three of you are going to go... Been that, you healed me from this, and you're going to zero right in on that person. You're going to pray with them. You're going to come alongside them. And you're going to help with their restoration. Because all of you in this ministry, I know you too well. You've been through stuff. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And all the suffering you've been through, guess what? You know what you're going to do? God's going to turn it around for glorious purposes. Yeah. Because as He heals us, we help with the healing and restoration of others. That's what the church is supposed to look like. A copy, a copy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Thank you. An exact copy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. When people walk in those doors, they should see the work of Christ in His life in here. Hallelujah. And I'll keep preaching it until it happens. Amen? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Now we're going to talk about the real testing of your heart. How faithful you are. Turn to Genesis 22nd chapter. Oh, Lord. We're going to talk about the father of your faith. Oh, Lord. Remember some obedience. God's obedient to His Word. Why? Because He is the Word. Okay? Obedience is everything. You want to see God be faithful? When He tells you to do something, you go, I don't understand. He's going to go good. Good. I'm glad you don't understand because I didn't give you the understanding. Now do it. Oh. Oh, really? <laughs> Verses 1 and 2 of chapter 22 in Genesis. Everybody knows about our Father Abraham of faith. Amen? Amen. Now he has the son of promise. I think he was about, what, 11, 12 years old by now, the boy. Got the son of promise. He's all happy. Life's good. He's got a massive family and wealth and everything else. Now the testing of his heart really comes. Even though he had a son at 100, his wife was 90. All that testing was to prepare him for this. See, he saw God deliver time and time and time and time again. Now his faith in God has grown immeasurably because he knows God is faithful. Now God's going to see if he really trusts in God. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, 
your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I shall tell you. I cry every time I read that. I can't help it. I try not to cry every time I read God's word and I can't help it. It's supposed to be a grown man. I read God's word and I cry. And I'll tell you why. That's a testing of your heart that we know nothing about. But I thought about that too. Every parent that sends his child off to the military, God's asked him the same thing. Give me your son, give me your daughter. Think about it. Think about firemen. Think about policemen. They've given their life. So many have died needlessly. But they laid their life aside for the benefit of others to help others. But the, test, the father of your faith had to lay up his son on an altar, tie him down, and take a knife up. Put the wood under him for the fire and everything else, because that's how they made their sacrifices back then. But he said, here I am. It was a three-day journey. And he just said, he got up the next morning, loaded up everything, and off they went. He didn't, he didn't ask a lot of questions. He didn't say, I can't do this, and oh my God, what's going on? Somewhere in his heart, he knew God so well that there was a reason that he had no understanding of. Because this was the son of promise when he had went from Abram to Abraham. You're going to be the father of many nations. It's going to more than number the sand at the sea. He gave him a promise and then said, I'm going to take your promise and you're going to sacrifice him to me. Now the promises God has made you what he's going to do with your life. Have you laid them on the altar and say only you can bring them to pass? Or have you put that expectation in you? It's you laying yourself on the altar every day and saying, here I am. I can't make these promises happen. I got to a point yesterday where I felt so small that I said, God, I don't even care if I get up tomorrow. I just, I just, I just, I just laid there on the floor. I had, no, I had nothing else to say to him. That's a miracle all in itself. <laughs> he talks more than I do, and that's a miracle in itself. But the thing is, guess what, though? He didn't say anything else, but here I am. He got up the next morning, he loaded everything up, and he laid that boy. He laid him before God. Just like the Father gave his son for us. It's so important that when God's testing your heart, that we say, here I am, Lord, what would you have me to do? You're not always going to get the understanding when you're in that fire. You're not. But go back and read Isaiah 43. Read that whole chapter. Though you walk through the fires, you shall not be burned. Though you walk through the rivers, they will not overtake you. There's a reason he's taking you through it. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you shall fear no evil. We walk through these things. His grace will carry you and take you through it. And he will protect you in there, but he will change you in there to be a copy of the Son of God. That's what it's about. That is true faith. Not by what all the men of faith, when you read Hebrews 11, read that chapter and read it and read it and read it. Because I'll tell you why. None of those men of God, if they were to go by what they could see and what God told them to do, they never would have done it. He never goes to Mount Moriah to put his son there if he doesn't know God raises the dead. Because the son of promise was being sacrificed. Think about that. He had to know that God was going to raise that boy up because he was going to be the father of many nations. So in his heart he's going, okay, I'm going to give you my son, but you're going to give him back. Because that's where the generational thing comes back. He's faithful to his covenant for a thousand generations. See, you go right back to Deuteronomy. He's faithful to a thousand generations. So God cannot be faithful because he's always been faithful. He does, it's not in his nature to be unfaithful because he can't be. He's God. Trust in who He is and His faithfulness. And no matter what He calls you to. Like I said, when He told me I was going to be a pastor, I said, oh, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. I like being an evangelist. Too bad. You gave me permission to do what I want with you. That was one of them give you permission. Remember what I said when you come up for prayer and you say, God, change me? He will, because I did. I just I pretty much prophesied it over myself. I was at a church one day and I told this one pastor, pop, 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 and I walked out of them and went, oh my God, what have I said? It wasn't until that afternoon he started dealing with me. You will be. You gave me permission. You just spoke it to him. There was no way out. See, I don't have any other doors to go through. And neither do any of you. You want to make your own doorway, though. Stop trying to make an escape route 
when the only place you can go is to his feet and say, Lord, I humbly submit myself to your purposes in my life. Test my heart. Make it true to you. And then let God be God. Honestly, I'm telling you something. There's not a greater joy in the world when you're totally surrendered to God because every burden you've ever had will be gone that quick. It'll be gone immediately because you'll know that He's faithful to watch over this Word. It says, He says, I'll watch over my Word and I will perform it. If God said it, He'll do it because He's God. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Peter 3. Don't even go there. The genuineness of your faith will be what? Tested by trials of fire. The genuineness of your faith. Do you really believe that what's in your lap is the living Word of God and every word of it's going to come to pass? Yes. When God says, I'm going to supply all of your need, do you really believe that? Or are you going to get up tomorrow morning and figure out how you're going to pay the bills next month? Mm -hmm. We all do it. We all do it. Oh, yeah. Sure we do. See what I'm saying though? Do you really believe that when God says, if you follow me and you're obedient, I'm going to provide what you need even though you can't see it, even though it's not your bank account. You can't see it. It's not in the bank, but it's in his bank account. Amen. It's in his bank account. Yeah. Because he knows what you're going to need tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. And he, remember what we talked about last week? The not yet is already taken care of. That was such a great revelation he got, gave me last week. That was so beautiful. Why do we worry about there when he says, I made known the ending from the beginning. So your not yet's already taken care of. So you shouldn't even have a not yet. When you move, don't worry about the yet's. They're already taken care of. He's already accomplished. What, what you need when you get there, he's already going to be there. He's not going to send you there and not bless it. He doesn't work that way. He doesn't pull you out of something and put you somewhere else and say, okay, now you're on your own. Go figure this out. He won't do that to you. He won't do that to the girls. Believe me. God is so faithful. When He calls you, do like Abraham said, here I am, Lord. That's all He said, here I am. He heard His voice and here I am. What would you have of me? And He was obedient. And the rest, they say, is history, okay? Because the blessings of Abraham, you know how you receive them? Through the fiery trials. So you don't look for blessings. You love Jesus. I'm telling you something, you fall more in love with Jesus, you'll be more blessed than you can. This building isn't big enough, this city isn't big enough to contain them. This universe can't hold God. I mean, he sat there, he's so far above that sunset yesterday, and then he just went, hey, go outside. Just because he's God. You know why he did that? Not that I'm special, but because he loves me. He loves me. Because of what I went through yesterday, when I went out and looked at that, the changes I was going through, I looked at that and it's like I hadn't gone through a change. I just had a whole lot more peace, and I saw my Father at work in the heavens. See what I'm saying? You're going to go through things to be more like a copy of the Son of God. But when you come through these purposes, and it doesn't happen at once, it happens over, over time, that journey that we're on, getting closer and closer and closer to the top of that mountain, well, you just take that last breath and then you're in glory. Hallelujah. Okay, so that's what we look for. This is established here. But the journey there can either be rewarding and enriched by the spirit of grace and purpose and meaning in your life. Or you can sit there and try and make life happen. Go and accomplish and be somebody so everybody looks at you instead of at Christ. You know what to do as ministers of His Word? We're to lead them to the cross. Because you're all ministers of the Word of God. Every one of you is ordained. You know that already. Forget about a piece of paper. I'm not giving them out. You don't need it. God told me when I was born again, He says, you got ordained the day you said yes to me and said, come drive all the darkness out of my heart and soul and mind. Fill me with your Spirit. I was ordained by God that day, but actually I got ordained before the earth was made because they already knew how far I was going to run until He had to come get me. Oh, hallelujah. And just like all of you, you thought you could get away from God, and you can. Okay? Because you're born again. You are owned and possessed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Surrender yourself to His sovereign Lordship over your life. Then you won't fight Him so much. You know why we do all these wrestling matches? Because we want it our way. God's pulling you out of your little comfort zone. Yes. 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 Isn't it? Yes. <laughs> we get comfortable in life, and then we go, we don't like, we don't like change. He's a God of change. Tell me you can look at the sunset every night and tell me He doesn't change it every day. 
Yes, he does. And he's going to change you day by day. Yes. Until there's so much glory coming out of you, people are chasing you down the street. How do I get what you have? Hallelujah. How do I get what you have? Yes. And you're going to say it's not a for sale. Well, let yes. me introduce you to my best friend. Boy, right. boy. Yeah. Then you got him. Then you got him. We should be so illumined with the presence of God in us that when people see you, they go, Wow! Yeah. What do you Lord. have? Remember, I said that they're going to look at us. I said that two Sundays ago in the service. The Bible says they're going to look at us with wonder. I still have people looking at me going, where do you get that from? I saw good old Johnny V this morning in the in the store next door. Went over there to get some more half and half, right? So I walk in there and he just took one look at me. I said, morning, Johnny. How are you? Because God's having me in such a good place from the time I get up this morning. I guess I was glowing away. And he just kind of stood back and went. <laughs> and you know what? Praise God because that's going to drive people to hunger and thirst for Him. Because I didn't get this way by myself. He did it. Right. Dennis didn't get there. I didn't put this peace in me. He did it. Yes. He did it. The more you give God praise and honor and glory for being your Prince of Peace, and the more you praise the holy name of Jesus and the holy blood of Jesus, the more you lift His name on high, the more He's going to come in you and take you over. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When you focus on God and who He is, you're going to see just how faithful He's been since the book of Genesis. You'll see over and over and over they fell, they repented, he raised up. They fell, they repented, he raised them up. Over and over. He's been doing it from the beginning. He's never not been faithful. He's never not been the God of all grace and mercy and forgiveness. He's never not. He was the same yesterday, he's the same today, and he'll be the same tomorrow until you go home be with glory in him, okay? It's going to happen. He has been faithful from beginning to end. He can't be anything else but faithful because if he can be unfaithful, he's not God. Right. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. If he's not faithful to watch over this word and do it, he's not God. And let me tell you something. He raises the dead. I've told you, I'm living proof. Hallelujah. Yes. But there's hope for me to be raised up. There's hope for everybody walking this planet. Thank you. I'm so tired of hearing Christians say there's no hope for people. Yes, there is. Yes, yes. Yes, there is. And don't ever let anybody tell you there's not hope for your family members or anything else. Because there's hope for them as long as they're breathing. Yes. There's hope that Christ is going to yes. save them. Yes. 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 He's hard. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. God is changing the message. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, <laughs> Yes, yes. You're so good to me. Psalm 31. Watch what happens when you're obedient to his faithfulness. Watch what he does for you. There's so many benefits to following Christ and being obedient. We can't count them all either. Psalm 31, verses 23 to 24. Yes. Yeah, he put this in there last night. He changed the whole ending of this. Amazing the revelation you get when you're in the shower. Because <laughs> I was stuck yesterday afternoon. I put it down. I just going to clean the house. I'm off the floors. I had worship music on. I was having a good time. Then I take a shower before you go back in the office. Okay, went in the shower. Got all the sweat off. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Okay, thank you. Back out of the shower, back in the office. But you see what I mean? When I, sh when I shut down yesterday with the sermon, I actually just I hit a lock. Couldn't go any further. I didn't get anything. I knew there was some more script, a couple more scriptures for it, but I didn't know what. So I'm back to cleaning the house, doing things, working out, having a good time, and just worshiping God, being thankful. Okay, go take a shower. Went to the shower. As soon as I'm in the shower, boom, boom, boom. Okay, thanks. That was easy. I mean, immediately he gave me what to do. I mean, he is so faithful to us. Because I, I got to a point where I, it was starting to overload me. I was reading all these scriptures and I was getting overloaded. So slow down when you're praying and you're reading the Word. Let him show you what he's teaching you. Watch these couple verses right here. Oh, love the Lord, all you his saints. That's all of you. You're all saints of God in Christ Jesus and you're nothing less than that. And don't let anybody ever tell you you are. For the Lord preserves the faithful. And fully repays the proud. Don't worry about who's doing what. He's going to deal with them. It's not your job. Be of good courage. Watch what he does next. He shall strengthen your heart. 
All you who hope in the Lord. Yes. When you're faithful and obedient, God will not only strengthen your heart, He'll preserve you. Yes. He says He'll guard you going out and you're coming in from this time forth and forevermore. He says He'll protect you from all darkness. These are promises of God when you're faithful. Actually, you're being faithful to His faithfulness. <laughs> yeah. All you're doing is trusting in how faithful God is, not how faithful you are. But if you ask God for the grace to be a faithful, obedient child, remember we talked about Wednesday, if you were here, we talked about when you go to God, you call me your friend. He calls us his friends. How much better of a friend can you have than Jesus, the faithful one, the King of Israel, the heavens and all the earth. He calls us his friends. Think about when you, who could you really call on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no matter what day, what year, what time, who can you really call on that's always going to answer and be faithful and love you no matter where you're at? Think about that, Jesus. Jesus, you can call up, you can say, I'm your friend. I'm your, I'm your son or daughter. You can do that whenever, wherever you are. I don't care what the circumstances say. Lord, I'm, you're my best friend, but you're also everything that book says. You're my friend. Why would you not want to call upon your friend who promises to answer, honor, rescue, and deliver you? Psalm 91.15. It is so important that when you realize, when the more you look at him and his faithfulness, what he's going to do in you, for you, and through you. And that's what the process is for. To take hope and self out and put all your hope in his faithfulness and his goodness and his power and his mercy and his love and his kindness and his compassion. And how much He wants to do in you and through you and for you. Amen. He loves to bless His children. The reason we're not blessed is because we got a list. Well, let me tell you something. His list is a lot better than yours. Yep. Right. Amen? Amen? That process you're in in James, the first chapter, verses 2 to 4. That was, this was the one last night I said, Really? It was the one, he, one of the ones he gave me in the shower. He said, no, no, no. You put that in there tomorrow. I said, but you were on a roll right up to here. <laughs> you were doing good. You sure? He said, I'm sure. There's a reason why. So I said, okay. <laughs> it's me, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. But he's preserving us by Jesus. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's talk about some real joy here. My brethren, 1st chapter of James 2 to 4, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. This is this is the part that really that really stuck out. And this is a really good what the process you're in, the fruit that it bears is awesome. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces what? Patience. <laughs> But let patience, watch this, have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. You're going through some various trials for divine purposes so that you're content. It says, godly contentment. That's where you want to be. Because when you're content wherever God has you each day, that's when heaven starts to open. Because you've accepted where God has you today, tomorrow, and forever. Godly contentment brings great grace. And great grace brings blessings. That means you get up in the morning and go, you know what? I'm thy servant. My faith is in you. I belong to you. And you leave it alone. You stop trying to make something happen. Let God fill you with his wisdom and discernment. He'll show you the plans that he has in the book he wrote about you. Psalm 139, 16. Go back and read that sometime, and you'll see that before a day on this earth, God already wrote your life story out. Yes. Stop trying to write your own book. It's not going to work. God told me 19 years ago I was going to write a book. I still haven't started it yet. So you see, I started talking to people about it. They go, oh no, that will be great. That's a great title. That's all, yeah, this is, man, I started making notes and everything else. And then about two months later, I threw the paperwork out. I said... He says, you're not even close yet. 
Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> he, he won't leave us for roll. Because you should have seen me. I'm praying. I'm writing scriptures out. I got a little notebook thing. We can start out with this chapter. And this will be the next. I had titles for chapters. Oh, yeah, I was on a roll. I was on a roll. And God was going, he let me do it. I was talking to people, praying with people about it and stuff. But a couple of my mentors were just going. And they're waiting for my visitation. And finally one day I was praying, he goes, when you stop all your nonsense, you're not even close yet. Because what's going in that book is not going to take two and a half, three years you've been saved. It's going to take a lot of years. Because he was showing me where I was going to be 15, 20, 25 years from where I was then. I wasn't that product yet. Dennis hadn't been purged of Dennis yet. Dennis was still the issue. Thought I was going to go out and do all these great things for God. And then I found out the hard way that God does great things through willing servants. Right. Had nothing to do with my efforts, only my surrender. And that's for all of you in here. So consider it a joy because the patience is going to work in you. That patience is what brings godly contentment. Remember, he's always going to be faithful. He cannot be unfaithful. He can't be. And when you get that in your heart, you know God can't be unfaithful. You got it from there. You got it from there. He, now he's got you to where your focus is on the faithful one. And not on humans. Remember something, God is the resource of every good and perfect gift. Does it come through many people, many things, many circumstances? Yes. But he is the resource of life and blessings of health and wealth and peace and prosperity, restoration of your soul, the healing of your broken heart. God is the resource of life. No one else. Can He bring it through different people and help you and financially help you, come help you do a job, whatever it is, that's fine. But all resources flow from heaven. But they flow through people. Remember that. He's your resource. Don't ever look to people to be your sustenance. Because with that, you're on your way down. He is your sustenance. And when you remember that, you won't even be looking for it to come. It'll just come. Mm -hmm. oh, It'll just come. Amen. It, when you're not looking for it, you've been changed. You've been processed to not look for answers knowing that He's already answered it. Amen. Yes. Amen. He's already answered it because He says so in here. Yes. Oh, huh. When he says, I know what you need before you even come with your right. wish list, yes. stop with a wish list and start praising Jesus for who he is, the faithful one. Right. Hallelujah. Faithful and true and just as our God. Amen. Yep. We're going to finish with Hebrews, the sixth chapter. Oh, God is so good. Okay. What you just said, Lee, if we'd only get that in our hearts alone. That God is good all the time, every second of every day. God is good. God is love. That should put peace in your heart right there that you know God is love and peace. You know that and He's good. He's faithful and true. Those words just sound like words, but He is all those. Those are some of His attributes. They don't really cover the list. Like I said, we can come up with a million names for Him and it still doesn't cover who God is. Because we are so small down here. Chapter 12 in Hebrews, verse 6. I mean, not 6. Verse 10 to 12 in Hebrews 6. Sorry. Oh, okay. no, it's one of those days. <laughs> God is good. Amen. 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 amen and amen. Alright, verses 10 to 12 in Hebrews 6. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward His name. In that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end, that you do not become sluggish, but what is that? Imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Now he's talking about eternal life and the promises of God. Now your eternal destination, like we've talked before, is already a done deal. Done deal. If you want to inherit God's promises while you're here, if you want the blessings of Abraham on your life, I do. If you don't want yours, just don't God give them to me. Because I know lots of people that need them. 
Because <laughs> the more I get blessed, the more other people are going to get blessed. The more this ministry gets blessed, the more other people are going to get blessed. Because that's how it works. It really works that way. The kingdom of God has gotten off track why it's here. When God blesses a ministry, that'll bless others. Amen. That's why this ministry does what it can to help out everybody in here as much as it can. We bless Israel every month with money. That's why things are happening here. That's why God's presence is in this house. That's why when we sing, He is glorious. And the anointing on those words today. Guess what, church? You're the church. Be in love with Jesus and you'll inherit His promises that He has for you here and now. Because He wants to do abundantly beyond all that you can think or imagine. He wants to pour such a blessing on you, you don't have room enough to contain Him. Yes. But don't trust yourself and don't try and make that happen. He will do it because that's His nature. Thank you, Amen. I want every blessing that He can possibly give me. I want it so that it's more than this whole part of town right here. So that no matter who comes by, we can bless somebody with something. Amen. Whether it's food, whether it's money, whether it's a need. I mean, we're not there yet. But you know what? I know God's got it sitting there on the shelf. Because the more this ministry grows in faith in Him and who He is, the more we bless His holy name, the more He's going to do with us. And the more people, like in the last month and a half, we've been able to help a bunch of people here. And what a privilege that is for me to be a part of being a blessing to somebody. Remember something? He blesses us so we become a blessing. That's why I pray blessings on people in this ministry every day so we can go out and bless others. That's what it's about. We have such blessed people in here. We have such talented people in here. I mean, things are, everything in here was made by people. That sign was, this was, David building that rack, the other person bringing that. All these things were done by people. I mean, David Walsh comes up to me the other day. He's making some racks. Nobody said anything to him. And they're going to go right on the wall so the ladies can just hang their microphones right there and right there so they're out of the way. And then it'll go bouncing all over the phone and echoing everywhere. Nobody asked them, but God touched his heart. That's the kind of ministry we have here. Amen. People come in, we got a little water on the ceiling. David and Christopher come in and fix that stain on the ceiling the other day and fix that. See, nobody said it. We talked about it, but we didn't. Yeah, we'll get to it. But God led them to do something. See what I'm saying? We're always helping one another here. And that's what the family's supposed to be. That's why you need to pray with one another. Don't sit there and be ashamed of saying, Oh man, i got a need this month and I don't know what to do and I ain't got enough food. Get on the phone and start praying with people. Call me. We'll figure something out. We'll go to God and He'll provide. Take my word for it. He'll show up. He really will. Because He's God. And He's faithful. And He's true. And he doesn't want his children struggling with their heads down, but going up, Abba, Father, Amen. you said you would take care of everything because I'm your child. Amen. Because he's faithful. I love that. Call upon my name, and I will answer, honor, and rescue, and deliver you, and satisfy you with a long life. I want that satisfied, blessed, prospered, like we read in the Scriptures before, spirit, soul, heart, mind, and body. He wants to restore us to oneness with him. I tell people all the time, I'm going to be fresh and flourishing until I go home. There's no reason I'm getting old. Because I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm telling you, He has honored His Word that says, I'm going to restore the years to you. Because let me tell you something, I feel better than when I was a teenager. I'm not kidding. First of all, I don't have any demons in my head. I don't drink, I don't take drugs, I'm doing pretty good there, okay? God's been faithful. But now, like I said, I'm telling you, I feel younger every day. I feel healthier every day. He's helped me to eat right and exercise again, taking care of the temple. And I can really feel myself feeling better day by day by day. You know why? Because He's faithful. He gave me the grace to follow the Word and to love Him above the blessing. It's not that I feel so good, but I bless Him because He, he honored His Word. He told me when I got saved, I'm going to restore all the years that were taken from you. I am going to keep you fresh and flourishing. I'm going to give you wings as eagles. You're going to soar in the Spirit with me. I'm going to show you eternal things. You're going to help lead people to me. I'm going to make a purpose and a meaning in your heart that will never leave you. God is faithful. He did it. I didn't. I didn't go get Him. He came got me. He sent some saints to pray for me. And their prayers He honored. And He pulled me in day by day as I went kicking and screaming. Yes. And so did all of you. Amen. Don't say you jumped up and down and rejoiced when the grace of God showed you what a sinner you were and you needed a Savior. You didn't go, oh, thank you, Jesus. No, you didn't. Oh, God, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I, I need a Savior now because I am a sinner. Hallelujah. Okay, that old joy thing. Think of what you're going through as a joy, but that there's a divine purpose for you. 
that he's working something out in you so you're becoming the copy, an exact copy, a resemblance of the Son of the living God. That's why you're going through what you're going through. So you can walk in the newness of life that only Jesus Christ can give you. You can't give it to yourself. You can go home tonight, you can go on a two-week fast, you can do whatever you want, you can pray all day, you can read the Word 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You won't get there because you put the effort in. Yeah. You didn't let His grace and Spirit take you there. Yeah. Capture you with His Holy Spirit. So yeah, let Him capture you. Amen. He just wants to capture each one of us yep. with His Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So cool. It sets you free. It does. Because it yes. takes all the expectations off of you. Like I said, it says in Psalm 55, 22, cast your burdens upon the Lord. And He will sustain you. He'll never allow the righteous nor be shaken nor moved. Psalm 16, 8. I put the Lord continually before me. He's at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Again, God. God will. God will. God will. Don't say you're going to. God will. It says put the Lord continually before you. You need to hold on to the hem of His garment and then watch your life change. But I'll tell you what, He's going to take you places you don't want to go. Hallelujah. He's going to call you to do things you're going to say, I can't, but He's got you good. Because you can't. It says in John 15, apart from me, you can do nothing. He meant it. He said it. And that's why He said it. But when you realize, you know what, but with you in me, no matter what you call me to, just say, here I am, Lord. Stop the fighting. Just stop the wrestling. Because you're just going to get tired and wore out. Got a bunch of those t-shirts in the closet, and I threw some of them out yesterday. Okay? I just threw them out. I went through a couple drawers. I got all these old t-shirts that are ripped. You know, men. We like the old t-shirts. They're hanging. One sleeve's up here. One sleeve's over here. Got a hole here. Mike's laughing. Got a hole over here. But you like them because they're comfy? I must have torn about nine of them out yesterday. It was like after I got up off the floor, he got done twisting, I put some more laundry in. He said, he said go in that drawer. Go in that drawer. Go in that drawer. There's like one in the closet, one out here. I had a stack like this, right in the garbage can. Yeah, pretty strange. I got, a whole, I got two bins of those in the garage already, okay? Those are the other ones. But think about it. I threw out the old nature. Because that's what he did in me yesterday when he broke me down. I said, I don't want this old nature ever touching me and getting a hold of me ever again. It interferes with my peace and my relationship with my maker. So he had me throw some old stuff out. And he said, this week there'll be more because you still got a bunch of stuff to throw out. Yeah. I said, okay, praise God. But see what I'm saying? I said, yes, Lord. Because he wears you out. Because I keep seeing when we let go, you know what? This is all coming this way. Every time we let go, more comes. It's amazing how he does that, but he does it because he's God. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't we bow our heads? Oh, thank you, Jesus. God is good. bowing your heads. I want to share something with you. We were in a little ministry in town. There was a gentleman there. And he kept asking me why I was always smiling. And I'd look at her. He'd look at me. Because you could see he wasn't real happy with whoever he was married to. Don't know why. She seemed like a wonderful woman. Obviously I didn't see behind the scenes. But he kept going, she can't be that. I said, no, she is that. God told me to wait for his best. <coughs> and I waited for his best. Because he gave me the grace to be prepared. I went through a process to receive a godly wife. I didn't earn her. I didn't deserve it. But guess what? He said, go through this process as I mold you into a man of God so you can receive <coughs> my best. 
The reason most of us don't have God's abundance in our life spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially is because we want to make it happen. We want to go out and make something come to pass because we actually think we know better. <coughs> no, we don't. She's living proof I don't know better because I never saw that. Did I desire it on the phone for over five years? You bet. While we were having a spiritual, I waited. And I needed God's abounding grace to wait. Because He said, if you wait upon me, I will prepare you to receive my best. Whatever you're in right now, you wait on God. You wait on Him. You thank Him for the grace to wait upon Him. His grace is greater than your flesh, by the way. And if you give Him permission to give you the grace, so you go through the process you're in, when you come out of that process, you're going to have a deeper, more intimate life with Christ, and the things that He is going to bless you with are going to come to pass. Not with what you're going to bless yourself with. You bless yourself by being obedient to God. And reading that Word every day. And seeking Him in the morning while He can be found. That's when you're going to receive God's best for you. But go through the process. It's worth it. Because as you become less, He becomes more. Then the peace and the joy of the Lord can fill your heart and mind. And you won't even want to do things in and of yourself anymore. <coughs> You'll want Him in the middle of everything from here on out. Because He has His best for you. We're not second-class citizens. We're royalty people. Read the Bible. Read 1 Peter. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation of people for Almighty God. And your Father, the possessor of all things in heaven and earth, wants His best for you. Stop thinking like you're a second-class citizen when you are royalty in God's eyes. You're washed in His blood. You're sealed with His Spirit. Like I said, when He sees us, you know what God sees right now on all of us? The robes of righteousness, the garment of salvation, that's what the Father sees in this house. He doesn't see where you've been because there's no record. He sees the redeemed children of Almighty God in this house. That's what God sees. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And Father, we come before you this day. We thank you that you are the faithful and true God. Lord, you knew from the foundation of the earth you were going to have to send your son, Father. Because man was so busy trying to save himself, the only thing they did was make it more difficult. But you sent the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel and all the earth, the sinless sacrifice to that cross over 2,000 years ago. Almighty God, we can never give you enough thanks and praise and honor and worship that's due unto the holy name of Jesus. God, we can never pay you back. But what we can do is surrender all. Lord, whatever process everybody in here is going through, I just pray abounding grace on them. So that they know what you're doing in them, that patience you're building, let it have its perfect work in all of us, O oh God. So that our hope and our trust, our commitment, our faith is all in you, the faithful one. And that, Lord, we don't look to people anymore. We look to you. Lord, unite this family in this building as never before. Bring the spirit of oneness and unity that only the Holy Spirit can unite us, O oh God. Because, Father, you wanted us to be the bride, not a divided bride, but one big table. There's one big table in heaven that we're all going to eat from. That eternal feast, O oh God. Give us a heart, one mind, one Lord, one God, one faith. Because, Jesus Christ, you are Lord of all. And, Lord, we just thank you for the power of your love today. I pray a blessing on everybody in here. I pray that you smile upon everybody in here. Enrich everybody here spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. Whatever their needs are, pour a blessing upon them they can't contain. But heal us from the inside out, oh God. Because unless we're a restored soul and heart and mind, we're never going to go out and share your love. We'll go out and share our pain. I want to share the healing touch of Jesus with everyone I come in touch with, oh God. Let us be that ministry of the power of your love to restore the lost. God, make us new vessels today. And Lord, what's ever trouble in everybody here, I thank you for removing it from their heart and mind so that all, all that's in them is turned over to you and that their only desire is to do what's pleasing to you, my Father, who wrote a perfect life for us before the world began. Father, bless everybody in here. Touch everybody in here. And soften these hearts not to be afraid of you and your love nor your purposes. Because, Lord, you take us through every trial. And what that does is it refines us to be more like your son. 
Lord, we just praise you. We bless you. We can't bless you enough. We can't praise you enough. We can't worship you enough, oh God. You are so holy and perfect yes. and true. Yes. And God, I just pray right now that everyone in his heart is open to your spirit. And whatever it is, they're letting go of it right now. Yes. And what's ever in their hearts being replaced by you. Yes. And your faithfulness and your goodness and your love. In Jesus' mighty name.